Welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Criterion, your exclusive advanced look at new Criterion releases. In this edition, we take a look at the 1993 Chinese film coming to the collection in 4K UHD, Farewell My Concubine. Well, My Concubine is a 1993 Chinese Hong Kong epic historical drama directed by Chen Kaige. It's based on the novel by Lillian Li and the film set in the political turbulent 20th century China from the early days of the Republic through to the aftermath of the Cultural Revolution. The story is of two men and their complicated relationship as opera stars and friends during China's tumultuous political revolution in the early 20th century. Cheng Dai-Yi, played by the breathtaking Leslie Chung, born in a brothel and sold off by his mother, a prostitute to the opera house, is forced to endure severe abuse and rigorous training in the company's attempt to raise stars. He is befriended by Duan Shalu, played by Fen Yi Zhang, who looks out for the young boy, and it is this relationship from which blooms an obsessive desire. It was the tradition of old that women did not participate in operas. Female roles were played by men, required to embody this new identity and dedicated to the performance of traditional opera. His character is perfectly balanced by Shalu's training in commanding male roles and haughty, carefree sensibility. Their performances are adored by all, and Dai-Yi's feelings for his friend and co-star become romantic. But all this changes when Shalu marries a prostitute, Zhu Shi En, Li Gong, coming between their art and the men. It's a tale spanning 50 years, all of it playing out against the backdrop of China's controversial and complicated history, of which I knew only the bare minimum. All of these elements come together somehow, knitting a coherent and powerful tale of betrayal, love, identity and condemnation. And it's nearly three hours long, and it's astonishing to find that you're neither bored nor feeling each minute go by. In fact, it flew by. Not only do you receive a brilliant history lesson presented in a beautifully crafted package, but possibly one of the most heartbreaking films I've certainly ever had the pleasure to watch. Equal parts homage to the classical Peking opera, to art itself and condemnation of a nation's history, the story is strikingly modern despite mirroring the narrative of the titular tale. The love triangle feels neither weighty nor unnecessary. Its most powerful asset of all is a contemplation of the identity and sexuality in the face of an ever-changing climate. The character of Dai Yi is both adored and condemned for his role with each changing year through pre-war China, the Japanese occupation and to the eventual enforcement of a communist government. We see the burden of a choice never made. And as the reflection of the all-male acting troupe comes into play and actions long in the past come under scrutiny repeatedly, it seems that the actor cannot win in a world that sees him as nothing more than an idol. Smoky beams of light, midnight blues, Delectable reds, twinkling golds, Farewell My Concubine has all of it. A swoony 90s lavishness, in fact. A magical realism, much like Need Jordan's The Crying Game. Infused with that period richness, similar to Amadeus, for instance. A drizzling of opulence, much like Sophie Muller's wonderful work she did on the music video Walking on Broken Glass for Annie Lennox. And sprinkled with a tone similar to that of An Actor's Revenge. Chin Kaigi's choices as a director render every scene beautiful and complex, drawing as much from the mise-en-scene as he does from the actors, and cinematographer Chang Waiju enhances the experiences, catching stunning angles, amazing setups, and creating an air of mysticism and romanticism with every frame. And there's nothing I love more than films about the arts be it the great composers, actors and performers for the stage with gaudy costumes and extreme hair and makeup that screams melodrama, but better yet, when it is filmed to perfection. 
The film has an interesting background as well. It was incredibly controversial upon its release, with the Chinese government funding many projects in order to recover some of the country's image following the 1989 massacre at Tiananmen Square. And furthermore, they wanted to re-stabilise the economy and assert their influence as a united front to the rest of the world in a post-Cold War climate. Therefore, film criticising the devastating effects that the cultural and political revolution made upon the arts was unwelcome, especially as it aired some of their even dirtier laundry. Now, the last half an hour is devastating and a revelation to the fragile wills of men. The film's casting was taken into much consideration as filmmakers wanted to reach a wide an audience as possible with this new image. And this led to the casting of Leslie Chung, esteemed across all of Asia for his cinematic and musical efforts. Yes, he's music, yes. He released 30 albums, many incredibly successful in his short life. It was the same reason that Gong was chosen also. With all these elements in place to release a successful melodrama, it's strange that the government had so many objections to it. Upon release, it was subjected to much scrutiny, being pulled out of theatres and criticised for its portrayals of homosexuality, violence and suicide under the Mao Zedong communist government. And it was then banned from theatrical release. But despite all of this, Farewell My Concubine won the Palm d'Or at the 1993 Cannes Film Festival, forcing the ban to be lifted following public outrage. Unfortunately, it was a censored version which cut much of the material that it objected to. Meanwhile, abroad, it had a distributed running time of 152 minutes. Blessed be the BFI for releasing this masterpiece to its full 171 minute length. And so it should be an often brutal and shocking depiction of the early 20th century. It probes and dissects many traditional and revolutionary institutions in the film. And it serves as both informative, eye-opening and a stark exploration of the reality behind the art, especially during such troubled times. Some critics point to the fact that Chen had engineered the film to fit domestic and international audiences' tastes, as Chen understands the international audience's perceptions and attitudes towards Chinese history and sexuality. As for the new restoration, it looks better than ever, and the recut version shows no signs of editing issues. In fact, I had to go back to a list to see where the beats were reinserted, only catching one or two that felt different than I remembered as I was watching. But I hadn't seen the Weinstein version in three decades. Those more familiar with the 1993 Weinstein version will likely spot them immediately. To this viewer, they all feel like material that never should have been excised in the first place, as they enhance the story rather than distract from it. And it took 30 years, but this version brings Farewell My Concubine to a new audience. It will have been well worth the wait. Now the film comes to the collection in 4K UHD with two discs, including a Blu-ray, with the presentation of the film and the following special features. New conversation between Chinese cultural studies scholar Michael Berry and film producer Janet Yang. Documentary from 2003 on the making of the film. Interview from 1993 with director Chen Kaiji, conducted by journalist Charlie Rose. There's a trailer, a new English subtitle translation, and an essay written by the author and scholar Pauline Chen. Cover art is by Eric Skillman. I'm slightly disappointed that there aren't more supplemental features on the disc, but Farewell My Concubine comes to the collection on 4K UHD and Blu-ray. It has a running time of 177 minutes and is in an aspect ratio of 185 by 1. That's widescreen. And it releases on Tuesday the 23rd of July as Spine 1228. In our final edition of Let's Talk Criterion for July, we'll be featuring the 1983 film Risky Business, directed by Paul Brickman and starring Tom Cruise and Rebecca De Mornay. So until next time from me, as always, it's goodbye and above all, good criterion viewing.